So you brought a friend of yours in here. I did. I was asking what you were like growing up, and he said you were a little bit of a bad boy. What's up guys, Nikki Novak here in the Young Hollywood studio with the star of Hatfields and McCoys, Matt Barr. I like the sound of that. Oh my God, please help me knee deep in the river trying to get clean. He says, wash your hands, get out the scenes, what you best believe, for this hell to pay. And you are John Z. I'm John Z. How's that for a name? Is John, uh, John Z, I was thinking like Jonesing, like Jonesing for something. Yeah. Well, jo John Z was Jonesing for a young lady. You come home with a hat for your bastard in your belly? He wants to marry me. You're not my daughter anymore. You know, I remember my, uh, like my uncles mentioning that phrase, Hatfield McCoy's, and I just thought it was part of, you know, American mythology. But it didn't I, actually exist. It didn't exist, and then the whole Romeo and Juliet kind of storyline that my character is a part of, I thought that was just a romanticized, you know, Hollywood embellishment, but I'll be damned, it's 100% it's true. And now you've lived it. I lived it. Yes. L literally, even, even fell off the horse, lived it. Did you really? Yeah. So you're, I was going to ask you how your horse riding skills are, but I guess that sort of answers the question. Uncle Jim and them was trying to get rid of Randall McCoy so all this fighting gets stopped. Their intentions was oh, right. Their intentions, like you, wasn't a part of it. So we had your co-star, Jenna Malone, in here. Yeah. But she was not your love interest in in the miniseries, was she? She, she does become my wife. Sort of the, the, the tragic circumstances that prevent me from being with my, my true love. I, uh, you know, jump into the arms Star -cross of Star-crossed lovers, just like Romeo and Juliet. Yeah, You're so. like the American version of Romeo and Juliet. Yeah, I mean, true story. Well, let's go back a little bit, because I heard you actually played Romeo and Juliet in a high school play. Where did you find that out? <laughs> no. it, it, like, it is like inside the actor's studio where, you know, they, yes, they like show, they like show the, the clip and you go, oh, God. <laughs> is it, so is it true? It's true. Some, did you wear tights? I wore tights. <laughs> My legs were so skinny that, you know, I looked like a, like a chicken or something. Just <laughs> big, you know, puffy. And then, again, going back to like 15, you met Kevin Costner. Yeah. Is this a true story? You actually traveled somewhere to go to see, for the love of the game, his, the premiere, and you walked up to him and you said something. Somehow, somehow I snuck in there through a friend of a friend and got me in there, and I just beelined it through this crowd of, you know, adults and went right up to him. and you know, kind of grabbed his hand and said, I'm gonna grow up and play your son in a movie someday. And now you do! Yeah. This deserves a round yeah. of applause. Yeah, I know, right? Awesome. So wait a second, are you just clairvoyant or are you incredibly determined or what are you, well, you look a little bit like you him. Know, ooh, oh my, it's a huge compliment. Robin Hood himself. But what was it about him that you, you loved so much? You know what I discovered was Kevin still loves making movies like the eight-year-old that, that that loves it. You know, the magic is still so relevant to him. And, um, and so every day we'd show up and, you know, he's been doing it for years and years, but he still like jumps up and down and says, you know, let's go make movies. So you're now not just an actor. You are a big Hollywood producer. Tell me about it. How did, how did it sort of come about? Did you always want to produce? I always loved movies. Yeah. And I, I knew I wanted to tell great stories. And uh, I just read this book one day called uh, 12 Mighty Orphans, and it was everything I loved about storytelling. It had orphans, it takes place in Texas, where I'm from. It's about football. So I thought, I, you know, this, 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 is, this is gonna make a wonderful film, and if no one's gonna go do it, I, I guess I gotta go do it. <laughs> One of our first meetings was like with Tom Hanks, and I thought, wow, you know, this, this whole producing thing's pretty easy. What are they talking about? <laughs> this tough. Just snap like, your fingers yeah, and Tom shows easy. up. It's a great story, and keep an eye out for it, because it's gonna make a great movie. You brought a friend of yours in here. I did. And before we started rolling, he was telling us a little, I was, I was asking what you were like growing up, and he said you were a little bit of a bad boy. My buddy, they had this foreign exchange student that was sort of a, a nanny for them, and she was from Sweden, and you know, blonde, blue-eyed, and I don't know, maybe 25, and she would, uh, she would tan topless. You know, we'd get off the bus and couldn't get fast enough up the stairs to the window, you know, peeking over, and it was like, you know, but we became men. Did you ever, yeah. did she ever find out? Well, I guess because she's European, the topless thing is really no big Here's deal. Here's the thing, she did see us. And she didn't do it. She just kind of smiled. That and went back. naughty little foreign yeah. exchange student. Yeah, right. <laughs> I know. You know, I, I need to go to Sweden. I think the last time you were in here, you told Oliver Trevina that there's two things that a man should learn: piano and magic tricks. 
You're right. How is it coming along? Well, I actually <laughs> was in Vegas last week, or a couple weekends ago, and I went to the Chris Angel show, and they sell these like kid magic sets, and I have to admit I went and bought one. What can you do? I wish I could. Can show you saw you. me in a half? I'll do one right here. Ready? Yep. Now close your eyes for one sec. Okay, now go. nothing yeah. on you, Mr. Matt Barr. <laughs>